so. Okay, ah, and I still need to do the layer support. Okay. Okay, I should try to, I should make sure to get that done before I leave. Um, okay. All right, okay, so we're going to go over the review on the distributed orchestrator. And um, I still need to do this. Um, what else do we got for you, Agen? Yeah, that's it. Like, uh, I have finished that bank contest review, like whatever changes you want to make. So if you have some, I can also update the chat Also, sorry about the background noise. I okay, have some yeah. Around, you know? That's okay, that's yeah. okay. Um, yeah. So what did you say, run context? Yeah, the run command. Oh, the right like command. The PR was, yeah. Oh, yeah, where'd that go? Um, oh, you had some just questions around it, or...? Oh, here no, it is. Uh, I, I, I just I made the changes about what you mentioned. Oh, okay, okay, great. No, I yeah. swear. Why didn't I see this? Weird. Okay. I thought I. Let's see. Yeah, you had reviewed it. I made changes. I Why didn't I merge? I must have forgot to hit merge because I remember looking at this. Okay. Great. Um, okay, let's put that on here. So, um, run command. PR ready for merge. They're just ready. Um, okay, Saksham. So you're still waiting for the layer support example. Um, and what else for you? Yeah, I'm working on uh, the uh, adding custom models using the Python API for PyTorch. And that layer support example might help a little bit more. Yeah, probably would be good. Um, okay, anything else? Uh, no, I will just push the changes for the PyTorch part of the example. Okay. In a day. Let's see. Um, okay. Um, so Tanshu's not here yet. All right, Himanshu. Uh, yeah, so I am working on those two examples, and I'm, uh, I have things to discuss related to operation. Okay, so which two examples? Uh, yeah, so one is Python example uh, that we discussed that we don't have to use the CLI, just mm -hmm. Python example, and the other and the other one is uh, that span. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I realized uh, if we just use the deep learning models, then it's basically same as similar to what other examples are. So it's not that useful. So I thought of using the scikit-learn because then we will have a bit different taste here. Mm -hmm. So and I'm I need to discuss something there. Okay. So and the Python examples were for your I/O tutorial uh, or yeah, no, no for scikit-learn operations. Okay, for scikit-learn operations. Okay. Yeah, we we added now a TF uh, ID vector for those things. Okay. All right. Great. Anything? Uh, am I missing anything on this list from anyone? All right. So. so, and then other business, um, CI is still broken. Um, there was um, issue with um, NumPy uh, dependency. Uh, I thought I had fixed this, and then Himachu, we thought he had fixed this, and it's still not fixed for some reason. Um, 
Wonderful. Um, but I did see, I did see that. Okay, this is all the shit I want. Um, get rid of close it. All right. Um, I did see that they said. I'm thinking that this might be the next course of action here. Is that they recommend that we use this new dependency resolver? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe um, maybe there's some kind of environment variable that we can set um, so that we don't have to add that flag everywhere because uh, clearly this is mess. Yeah. So, um, but I don't see why it's yeah. filling in docs because everything else is running fine. Earlier it yeah, was it filling everywhere, it right? It was a TensorFlow, mm -hmm. a hub, and transformers, everything were filling. But now only docs yeah. are filling. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good good question. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, because it should be installing everything. Um, should be installing everything in test dot. Um, when we test the main package for three point seven, there should be the same set of installs. Um, so that's weird. Um, how's it going, Yash? Uh, you need to use new dependency over um, and then issues with should I. So there was an issue with the should I stuff where I found that basically we're having this Rust package. So should I just runs whatever the applicable static analysis tool is um, with the use command. Um, and so the test case for Rust ended up actually testing JavaScript. Um, and so we weren't actually picking up. Um, basically, there was some modifications required there. Um, so I had tried to fix that one as a part of tackling the various things with the CI this weekend. Um, and, but that's the only thing I got to. And apparently I didn't do it very well because it's passing locally, but it did not pass here. Um, so now I'm extra confused and this is sort of just something I'm still going to look at. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have uh, actually, I faced one more issue uh, today morning. I was trying, uh, I don't know if anyone else is facing when I run the docs, uh, it says uh, con there is version conflict in uh, torch also by torch. So torch vision requires torch to be 1.6.0, but we have 1.5.1. I, I don't know it, it and uh, when I run a service install uh, the way we do it and it's not installing the 1.6.0 it should if there is conflict all okay. right um so let's see this is with uh, what were the two packages uh, uh, with PyTorch so with PyTorch there is torch vision that gets installed so torch vision requires PyTorch to be 1.6.0 uh, but but when I run DFFML service dev install user, it installs torch 1.5.1. So weird. Okay. On running um, the yeah, so on running the docs, it says contextual version conflict. God, I, this is my new. This is the new least favorite thing of mine. Is this stupid contextual version conflict? Um, I feel like we keep running into this, and so just the. The issue here is basically like I think I think the main issue here, and I'm hoping that this will be solved by that new dependency re resolver. Um, but it seems to be that that you know when you specify a version range which is greater than, it just installs the greatest version, and then it looks later at all of the other packages and says, "Oh, this one actually is restricted." But then it just goes and it says, oops, I already installed the one with the latest version. And then it just fails with contextual version conflict. I'm, that's my current understanding of what's happening here. Um, um, and basically... Yeah, this is this is what was happening with Conda. Yeah. So Conda was installing point 0.1 and then it was saying there is a conflict. Yeah, it's like, why are you installing the latest version if you have these ones that say the version range, then you should be hopefully i mean you should be resolving it to install within this range if you see one that says a range and one that says just greater than x right um but obviously that's not happening so maybe there's a way we can you know set this um 
within an environment variable um, or something. So, uh, okay, this is like new stuff. Um, okay. Please test it. Um, okay, yeah, and this is going to be the default in a couple months, so we should definitely figure out how to test it. Um, okay, let's see, what does it say? It will reduce inconsistency. Um, no longer install a combination of packages that is mutually inconsistent. Not satisfied, they declared version. Okay. Okay, instead of, so it will ideally give us a more helpful error message at least. Um, so let's see. Why is this not available as an environment variable? Ah, we have to modify all the damn commands. Um, okay, well, there's the feedback, right? Um, there are 23 questions, so I have one, one, one piece of feedback. Make it an environment variable. All right, okay. So let me just put this link here, and we will investigate this. Okay. Um, and then issues with should I, uh, was that, um, rest, uh, test issue causing CI to fail. Um, so basically it, it started failing because it was detecting more vulnerabilities. So I went in to update the fact that it now has more vulnerabilities. And then I found that, um, it's actually testing the Rust package for JavaScript vulnerabilities and not detecting that it needs to be scanning for Rust. Um, and yeah, so, all right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And so it's still broken, um, but I'm hoping to fix that one. I want the CI to be clean, uh, obviously before I take off. I probably still have my laptop, but um, all right, so. Distributed orchestrator. Um, okay, now I've got this on two computers, so. All right. Um, nope, wrong one. Okay, we'll I'll take care of that one too. All right, thank you for the notes. I appreciate the notes. Um, so the one thing was that, um, okay, so first of all, notes, let's try to move this into. Uh, yeah, that's, that was an official. Right? Yeah. It was just like you would Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. So, but, but, you know, if we move it into there, then we'll sort of start on it. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, I was waiting for the video to finish yeah. so that I can have the dogs with the changes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's still this guy. Yes, um, yes, yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, so this was... Um, this is kind of inconsistent with the way that we do passing of the arguments here. Um, Okay. And now it's making me wonder. Let's see what it is. Yeah, I don't think I use it anywhere. Like, I was using it, then I changed that. Yeah. I just kept that, like, in like, like, the be Okay. Yeah. I guess uh, we can see pretty little yeah, okay, because I didn't think I saw anywhere where it got no, used, but I, I saw like, that. It was used in a previous version, but uh, okay. that cool. was like, yeah. Yeah, so let's take that out, um, since just, yeah. Um, oops, okay, so. So, let's remove, um, Arguments from oh, and 
filters. Okay. Um, let's see what else do I have over here. Um, okay, so... Uh, Sorry, I've got it on two computers. Um, I don't think... I don't think there's anything else at the moment other than the fact that we should test with multiple worker nodes. Um, just, you know, to make sure that this is, in fact, running with multiple workers, right? You should set up the test so that, right. So I would I would recommend like three of them or something. Um, so okay. let's put that down here. I think um, I tested it locally in two. I was working on it like yeah, so let's, yeah, let's just do, you know, so let's uh, three workers and make sure. Yeah, all of them doing the same work, work for like, all of them on the same work for like. Uh -huh. So maybe use a loop or something. Oh, sorry, a loop for what? Uh, make sure, just make a loop. So instantiate them in a loop. Oh, instantiating. Okay, okay. I yeah. So you. basically, yeah, okay. right. Configurable two end workers, just so okay, in okay. case we need okay. to okay. tweak this later, right? It'll be yes. still good. Um, and then I think that's it. Yeah. So this, I mean, I, you, yeah, got, I like I also manually like instantiate a worker nodes because I want to assign them specific operation to see if they are like in the yeah. Properly. Yeah. That's that's. I also that's, check that. Yeah, so I mean, you could have it set. And then you could, uh, I mean, you could do do whatever you want as long as you know we validate that that you know okay. the different nodes. Okay. I would give them each different. Let's also mention that, right? So let's um, give. Oh, let's maybe make an operation sorry, for each worker. Then let's yeah. assume that that yeah that works. So let's give each a different set of operations and make some of them overlap and some uh, only for specific, only for, and some unique, um, and make sure that circular queues are set up appropriately. So basically, you know, validate that you you see the number of, of nodes that you expect in each one for each operation. And you could just go through and you could use like, um, you could use like operation dot load and then uh, and pick at random. Um, yeah, and just make sure you have um, I didn't get the last part, like mm -hmm. operation. Work. You so want to basically, you could use. I mean, so I mean, you, yeah, exactly, right. So okay. I mean, it doesn't really. So you could use this, or you could just have a set of operations. Just make sure you have. Actually, this might be, just that might be overkill. Um, just make sure you have enough, right, where you're having some of the nodes with overlapping operations, right? Okay, so okay, make sure okay. you have like, yeah, so make sure you have multiple nodes with check if get repository valid. Okay, and okay. then maybe, you know, ones that only, well, yeah, ones that have operations that other nodes are going to have, and then also make sure that nodes have operations that only they have, and then make sure that numbers okay. in the circular queues are correct. Um, okay. So, because, yeah, that's going to probably save you headache later on. Yes, yes, yeah. That now. Yeah, actually, um, it does really help. Yeah, yeah, right? Isn't it great? I mean, yeah. and, and you yeah. probably found like, Most of the time, I write the test first and write the code. That's yeah, yeah. This is the way to go. And and I'm sure uh, you probably found the fact that once you started, because uh, I saw you, I remember when you went through it first and you were having to restart the NAT server. Um, yes, this yes. is probably very helpful, right? <laughs> It speeds up your test time like a lot, yes. I'm sure. Yeah. Which is great. It's always great to invest in. in the test uh, with the debug messages are now my pathway to coding. Yeah, yeah. I make sure I do that first. Uh, all right. Okay. So I think, yes. Um, 
All right. So anything else that you wanted to hear specifically on that? I don't know. That's that. So I right, like uh, add the test, then I'll start working on the uh, I'm sorry that took so long. Things have been very active. Uh, no, it's, yeah. Like, uh, I, I wanted to pull it down and run it a few times and make sure <laughs> things. Yeah, maybe you can do it after. Like, I had that. Just yeah, make, exactly. Make so, yeah. yeah. So, let's see. Data flow run command PR ready. All right. Let's do, let's check this out. Um, okay. Well, I think none of that was pending comments. So, okay. She should have them all. All right. So, um, Okay. And let's see. So da, 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 da. we got no echo. We got no strict. Um, okay. and you may not have caught this. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, that works. That works. Okay. Um, I was just thinking this. I don't think. Okay. CTX as string. Um, oh, uh, so uh, like earlier we were giving back a course, so we had what contacts it was, but since we are returning dictionary now, dictionaries now, we lost what, when we are running multiple contexts, we lost the context input. So I thought it would be better with the context as the key. Yeah, but isn't as string, wait, where's as string? Where? I'm just, I'm sorry, I must not have seen this last time. Um, uh, all right, let's just run this real quick. Um, da, 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 da. This one, just to be sure, this works as expected. Okay, and oops. All right, so okay. Okay, and we are getting. God damn it, where'd that go? All right, so we're yielding as string. Yeah, as string, I thought it was, oh, self as string, okay, because we're assuming it's a string input set context, okay, and we can safely assume it's a string input set context. All right, this is something that, like, obviously is not ideal, the way that it's handling the as string thing. Um, uh, this was, like, from a long time ago. Um, 
So yeah, this will guarantee that we end up with string input set context. So as string should be fine, but let's do that. Yeah, the type thing. was string input set context. So. Yeah, let's just do, okay, this is like, okay. So the problem with this is, okay. The reason why this is the way it is, is because, um, so the idea was that you would have context and then the context might be some object that's, that lives in memory, um, right? The context is some object that lives in memory, maybe on a node or maybe on, uh, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe on, on different machines and it might reside, you know, in some kind of, you know, database. Like say, so say you're, say the data actually resides in Redis or something, right? Or some kind of, yeah, some kind of database, right? Um, the reason why this existed was because you would have um, the, the, and this is why like the inputs method and stuff are, are async was because that you may have these context objects and you may not necessarily have the data for the context on the machine. You would just have the context and you would want to, to, like dynamic like you would want to pull and this is where like i don't know if this made sense and this may need to change but the idea was that you the handle so there's the context and there's the handle and the handle is what you would use to actually access the data um within like redis or something right so maybe it's like a unique key or something and uh why was it async um you know, I should have commented it, but basically there was, this is this, I was trying to explain why this looks so horrible. Um, and the point is there was a reason and it probably should change because, you know, I don't, I don't know, like at this point, who knows what it was um, and we're not using it. So um, basically, but for now, until we change it everywhere, we should probably make it the same everywhere in case we end up using it or changing it um i know that probably that was just like you guys you guys know what i was saying though right uh yeah. basically yeah okay um this 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 is ugly um there was a reason for it um it's not currently <laughs> being used but until we change it everywhere let's just be consistent okay. um yeah that's that's the point so uh, okay so that and then that um and that's this should be let's see this that's that on this one um so i'll just do this um uh, let's see uh, i might be using that in multiple places Uh, looks like just here. Um, okay. In base. Okay. Yeah. No. I think I believe that's it. Yeah. Okay. The only thing, the other thing that we've done is we use stir on the context some places, and that's probably um, that's like we shouldn't be doing that either. But I think that's also places where we know that it's a input set context or a string input set context. Oh, yeah, that's in roots. See, that shouldn't be done either. Um, and as string method. Okay. Um, yeah, this is one of those premature optimization things. Uh, it should, probably should not have been around. All right, okay, so let's merge this guy. Um, Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. And I believe this has an issue too. So, yes, fix this. else on your end, Doug? No, 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 no. All right, 
okay, waiting on layer support example. I need to do this today, especially if I'm going to leave. Um, so I want that's my these are my goals is layer support example and uh, make sure the CI is clean um, for everyone before I take off. I will still be available ish, um, but you know not as much um, until next Tuesday. Um, so okay. Um, So I may, we'll see, we'll see if, oh yeah, Yash is here. Um, Yash, do you think you have uh, bandwidth to run the meeting Friday? Um, no pressure if not, but. Yeah, I can, I can. Okay, sweet. Um, so I will make, let's see. Uh, Yash will run meeting on Friday. Great. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I mean, you just, you know, you can just make a, make a meeting link and post it. Um, let's see. Because yeah, the one that's on the calendar hit, obviously it's, I don't, I can't, haven't been able to figure out how to make it so that everybody can just join. Um, okay, so working on adding custom models um, using the API for PyTorch. So you wanted to talk about that, right? Yeah, I'm working on it. Like I have a, f I have a few ways of doing that. I'm testing them out right now. Okay. Um, do you want to, you know, run through any of that with us, or do you just want to? Is that just sort of an update? Yeah, I'm. I'm still working on it. I don't have a solid plan right now. I'm just testing things out, and uh, I think I will be. Uh, I will let you know when things are ready to share. All right. Cool. Um, uh, anything you wanted to? Oh, I wanted to run through what's going on with uh with uh with this um the pre-processing um so let's see that's off of the pull request that has the flower examples right yeah so it's like uh, i run i run the no, merge command and it's like it's not it's not giving the json file and i ran it for like 20 minutes twice and there was not there was no success for that very odd okay um oops. it works for like 20 30 images but then it after that like if there are more than like 100 or so images it just doesn't give anything mm, interesting all right okay so yeah let's go try to run this uh, da -da. okay Also, like I wanted to talk about this, uh, we are in, in here in, can you open that uh, tab again? In the second last line, there is image int and then 500 into 500. Uh -huh. So the thing is that not all images are of equal size. I have just given this size so that nothing breaks. Uh, so okay, so. We need to like update the features. Okay, so so the length is going to be different for each one. Um, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, yeah. So I mean, isn't the it's result working, of this? It's working. It works without any problem. If I give any, if I give even if an, even if I give one. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I don't think we're doing any validation on that. I'm just wondering: is there the the point of that that the giving the length is? Um, is that if I recall, like, 
when I had initially done the TensorFlow one, it wanted to know what this, what the dimensions of, or like what, what this length of the, um, of the feature was. When you create the numeric column, it wanted to know what the length was there, but I would assume that that stuff has been maybe updated. Um, with, I mean, Himanshu, you updated it to CF2 stuff. Um, so I don't know if that still matters at all. Um, and I guess we're not using TensorFlow here, are we? Um, so let's see. Uh, sorry, which one? Uh, when we did, I mean, the reason why we have this length, right? We're not using it with Scikit because I guess I would assume maybe Scikit assumes things are sparse if we have data with different um, with different uh, sizes okay, of arrays. Uh, don't, I mean, yeah. Don't know that. I have yeah. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Question. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So. The reason why we had the we have the length on on a feature is because um, is because let's see where let me just pull up the code. Um, yeah. So TensorFlow creates problem. Uh, what I found is because TensorFlow takes the batch and then there is a lot of change in the matrix size, so it creates problem if you don't specify the proper shape here. Yeah. Um, but with Scikit, I don't think there is anything related to that. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's making me think, you know, like, because we, we want to make sure everything is consistent here. So, um, yeah, okay, yeah, shape, feature dot length. Um, so, let's see. Well, if we move, well, no, that's not going to change anything. Um, okay. And there is, uh, there is just one more thing I found. I don't know if someone uh, got stuck there too. Uh, what happens is when we are reading the columns, we increase one dimension because so if there is two dimensional data we are putting in, we uh, we write np dot array and then we put the data inside it, so it makes it three dimensional data. So, uh, so that is something we need to keep in mind while giving the input. So, if I'm uh, inputting, let's say, one cross ten, then I will have to enter one cross one cross ten. I need to specify that because we change the shape uh, inside the code. Where do that we change it? You mean in the scikit models? Or? Uh, no, in TensorFlow. Uh, let's see yeah, where so, so, uh, so the place where we read the data. Okay. Oh yeah, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you see, if you can go on the top. Okay, here maybe. Or this is yeah, oh, yeah NP yeah. array. Okay. Yeah, so so we are converting NP array, and there is X calls features. So that is already a two dimensional, and we are when we are converting it again into an array, it adds one more dimension to it. Okay. Yeah. So. So that is something, uh, if code is not visible, then that is something difficult to guess. So I was just thinking the other day that uh, we should be able to guess what will be the first dimension. That is, so it, what TensorFlow does it is it does not takes the first dimension. It takes it as none. Okay, so ah. none means the number of uh, examples that we can have. So that may vary. Nobody knows in file how many. I mean, yeah. you can count, but that is not friendly right yeah so but we need to specify here because we don't do it automatically so i need to go check in the file that there are 50 examples that i need i am putting so i need to specify that the dimension of the data will be 50 cross whatever the column size is so that is something okay. if yeah so so actually i need to talk about these things only today and I, I have one more problem with this okay um all right. Okay. So let's see. All right. So we'll come back to that then. Um, yeah, for yeah. now, yeah. we'll just. Okay. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad it's at least related. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So we'll run the merge merge command here. Yeah, let's come on. Okay. We'll run the merge command, um, and then we'll yeah we'll hit that when we're talking about. Okay. All right. So C equals, or let's see. Yeah, 
SRC DF. Um, Okay. Uh, oh yeah, obviously we need some, we need some, um, we need to download the data. All right, okay. Uh, Okay, we need to run the script. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Uh, I think we need to, yeah. All right. Um, and let's do Missing config folder name. Mm, and I think I probably also did not actually make the data flow. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna make the data flow too. Should I get, uh, paste the command in GitHub? Uh, yeah, if you wanna paste the command, that would be great. pasted the command in the top. Right. This will take two minutes and then it will be stuck on writing or It'll be stuck minutes. on writing the JSON? Yes. I wonder why this is taking so long for each one.
Object of type view int eight is not JSON serializable. Uh, you need to pull down the changes from the pull request, I think. Oh. Right. I've uh, I've already opened a new pull request for that JSON stuff. Oh, did we not? Oh, I thought I merged that one. Ah, uh, I see. Sorry. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez, I thought I merged this. Okay, yeah, sorry. I thought I would merge this one. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, let's pull on this guy. JSON file. Um, test of JSON. It's running. Yeah, it seems to be kind of slow. I wonder. We probably need to do uh, the thing where I have a branch open right now where basically you can control the number of executing contacts. Um, and I guess, I mean, it's not critical that we do this, but. The idea here would be, um, you know, we have we have two approaches. We talked about this before, but we have two approaches here that we could take. Um, we could do. Um, where is the data flow source source? DF. Um, so yeah, here we use the orchestrator context dot run, and we do it. Um, for each record, so we have we could do here um, uh, something like this, where we do like record context, um, and then we say record, um, and this way, the thing is we would get the records out of order, um, but that shouldn't necessarily matter. Um, and we would end up with it's running all the contacts at the same time. Um, the other thing is that, oh, here, this is why. Oh, yeah, because these are all pretty, these are all CPU intensive operations. So we need to get the other part of this, which is the um, running non-async operations 
in threads. Um, I think there's an issue for that too. So that would probably speed this up. So the two of those things would probably speed this up. Um, but that's just sort of for the future. Um, okay. Uh, Yeah, it will just remain like this for another 20 minutes. It's just going to be like this? Yes. Weird. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, because, yeah, this is... And it only happens when you're running the JSON source. Or, well, it only happens when you're trying to dump to a file. Yes. Um, okay. So, we need more logging in here, but this is not, um, okay. So, dump of the Updated. I think that uh, it is writing it to JSON, but it is taking a very long time because there are like uh, more than 100 records. Yeah. It, if we run it, it with 20, 30 records, it takes a minute, but it uh, completes the task. Okay. The JSON dumping is uh, very slow. I, uh, that's what I inferred from this. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just seems like it shouldn't be that slow, especially if you only had like a three point seven megabyte file. Like this. Uh, that three point seven megabyte file was for only four records that I was reading from CSV using load files. Only four records. Ah, ah, that makes a lot more sense now. Um, yes. Okay. That's why um, I said that it's not feasible to write it uh, for dumping. JSON and then use it. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Ah, uh, I see. Oh, I so yeah. Are you saving sparse matrices? Um, I think, well, I think we're just saving, yeah, I mean, we're, no, we're saving the, well, Sakshan, I think it's, it's just the image data, right? And none of those are sparse, uh, right? I think the, uh, the, uh, histogram calculate histogram method uh, gives some sparse metrics. Oh, okay. Um, because if it is sparse, then um, JSON may not be the perfect thing to use. Because then we have NPZ format, and uh, then we have uh, SciPy that handles the sparse matrices very well. So everything will speed up, and especially okay. the memory uses will also go down. So if that optimization is possible. Because I see a lot of zeros here, so yeah. if we can convert it to uh, sci-fi or to sparse, then everything will speed up. Maybe that will help. All right. I don't know. It's, I'm just looking from outside. Yeah. But it's just a suggestion. Are we losing we that? that? I mean, I guess we're probably losing the information on whether it's sparse or not when it just is reading out a zero, right? Is that what you're saying, too? Yeah, so because... Yeah, so because this representation is very heavy, we need to store all the zeros. Mm -hmm. So SciPy does not do that. So it has a way of handling. Also, this when we are using get, so with very low. Yeah. Also, when we are using work. get single in the yeah, yeah. in the features dot yaml file, we are also saving uh, the the original image data in JSON because when you see the record, you there are five columns: one yeah. for label, for the features, and one for image data. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. Okay. So there is one format. There is one format dot npz. If NPZ. if we can check that, I don't know if it is useful here, but yeah, uh, that is the way SciPy uses to store the sparse matrices. Okay. So maybe we need a new source for this type of thing, but that's sort of um, that's something we can do as a separate thing. Um, so let's see. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, it's in SciPy. I don't know about NumPy. Yeah, SciPy. S C I P Y. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just wondering how... Okay, yeah, we'd probably want some kind of custom thing on top of this because we want it to save... If it is NumPy data, we want to save it like this. Otherwise, we want to... Um, if it is NumPy data, we want to save it like this. Otherwise, we want to um, save it as usual. Um, This is something to consider for sure, um, and it may be, it may be, um, it may be something that that wraps like CSV source or something and uses these as like the data for those columns or something. I don't know. I don't know what we do, but we probably need a custom source for this. Um, There's, there's a few ways we could do this, right? Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. That's clearly... Okay, I didn't realize that 3.7 megabytes was for four records. That makes a lot more sense why this is not working. Um, all right. Um, okay, so let's... Okay. All right, okay, so... Uh, merged, so we merged the, um, uh, okay, export, uh, numpy, fixes, um, data flow, or merging, uh, image, to JSON file, not realistic. Um, instead, we should uh, continue doing the on the fly um, processing, maybe investigate Let's see. Might be worth investigating um, scipy dot save npz in the future for a more optimized source for saving sparse. Sweet. Anything else you want to talk about, Sakshan? Uh, yeah, but also, uh, there's also another PR, yes, or Docs treatment. All right. Sweet. Okay, and then just another thing. Um, the... The... Um, this is the same thing now, um, and it's probably clearer to do it this way. So um, I updated this recently because I realized there's not much point in having a dot auto method when we could just be passing them to the constructor. Um, it's probably more clear. 
Um, okay. For data flows, so do, 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 do. Definition. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So yeah, let me just. Uh, I'll just put this one on here. Um, Okay, looks like we have changed log conflicts. Um, right, yeah, so I guess can you push the... It's probably because I just merged your other branch. Um, so can you push uh, an update to the change log here? And then um, we'll be able to do that. Okay. So... Uh, merge data flow preprocessing. Source um, example. Sweet. All right. Okay, so, um, all right, so Himachu, so are either, okay, you wanna, you wanna just, we can talk about these first and then we can talk about the TensorFlow or is one of them related? Uh, yeah, both of them are uh, okay. basically a single thing. Yeah, so uh, I'm using Dataflow source. So what happens is one record gets uh, transferred and the operations work on them, right? So what I want is, uh, because uh, we have TF-IDF vectorizer. So it needs to see the whole data at once, not the single records at a time. So I need an operation where, uh, or something is there any other way where all the data gets collected and it is sent as a list of text rather than a single record at a time. Right, so you want all, you want yeah, let's say, every, let's say I have yeah. feature from every record like or not every feature but you want one specific feature from every record uh, no no, no. Uh, let's say I have 10 sentences so what will happen is first sentence will go in and the, all the operations will work on it then second sentence will go in then third then fourth like this but I want is all the 10 of them to go at once not a single record at a time okay and you want that to happen to just one operation? Uh, yeah, so I think it will be good if we have a separate operation that can collect the output of other operations because and because that will be good. So I can yeah. put this operation in between anywhere and it will just, it, it won't send the uh, data to any next operation. It will keep collecting uh, yeah. until the, everything exhausts. That's a good plan. Um, so the one problem you're going to have is is figuring out when it's done. Yeah, um, so that's, that is yeah. where I'm stuck. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, it might be good to implement. I talked about this before where it might be good to implement a, uh, a method on the, on the source to say, you know, what the count is. Um, because... That, and the reason why this wasn't done is because sometimes you might know the count and sometimes you might not. Um, for example, like with the, I mean, this was the original thing with when we changed the predict method recently to not take the iterator and now take the sources. Um, you know, if you're predicting on something that's a stream, you may not know what the count is. Um, but we could just return like negative one or something in that case. Um, 
so because yeah you need to know how many records exist within the source um yeah so you need the source to implement some sort of count method okay so uh needs a way to collect all the feature data um so you need a way to collect all the feature data um So list. Um, so we need to know uh, how many how many um, uh, so okay if we have an operation which will accumulate um, feature data, it needs to know when to stop. Um, therefore, um, we need to know the size of, uh, we need to know the size of, <clears throat> um, oh, the data set. Um, okay, so, Yeah, so basically, I mean, the main, the, 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 and so you're using the data flow preprocessing source. So we'd want, and just like how we have, okay. So, okay, yeah, and you so want every record. Yeah, so that's, if, if you go to specifics, then um, it's like I have first operation is remove stopper. So mm -hmm. it is taking a single sentence, it is remo removing the stop words, then it takes a second one. And on top of it, I have the new operation that is vectorizer. So what I want is I want to insert an operation in between these two so that the output of the remove stop word operation is accumulated uh -huh. you know, using that particular operation. And when everything is exhausted, it will uh, create a list of all outputs of the remove stop word and then it will send to the vectorizer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. um, let's see. And yeah, you want that to happen across records. So that's the other thing about when well, we just looked yeah. at the data flow source. Um, so right now, the orchestrator context that's running is going to, I mean, we, we complete we need to we need to run like everything has to be run differently um because so the in this with this what we talked about earlier right when we i think that's when this came up um we could also do it like this right um so basically stir or, well curd context um so we could do something like this where basically we'd have access to all of the so all of the orchestrator contexts would be, all of the records would be running at the same time in this situation. Um, and that they'd be running under different contexts. So basically each record would come in, it would, it would, so right. So the way that the data flow stuff works is that all your inputs run under an input set context, right? And in this case, the input yeah. set context is the record. Um, so all of the operations for every record are running at the same time, right? And so you would run the, the remove stop words would be the first thing that runs. And then the next thing that runs is this accumulator. Um, and so the, commu the accumulators would, be, would need to communicate um, between each other, um, well, there, there's going to be one, let's see, there'll be one instance per data flow. Yeah, there's one instance per data flow. Um, so you could create an operation that has like a lock and then a list. And then every time it's, okay, so it would look like, it would look something like, um, so yeah, we need to change it. First of all, so first off, we need to change it to be like this, um, and then second off, 
we would say something like async def. Um, uh, let's see. Up. Enter. Okay. Um, so this would be like, uh, what? What are we calling this thing? Well, it doesn't really matter. We'll just call it example. All right. Um, so self, and then it gets what the stop words. Yeah, it, uh, it will get a sentence. And is that like a list of strings, or is that just a stir? Yeah, it's just a string, you can see. Okay. Or a list. And it outputs what? Yeah, it, yeah so it, ha it has to collect everything, so it will be a list of string. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so this thing runs, and it goes... Okay, so it needs to know... How many stop words? It needs to know the stop words, and it needs to know the uh, source length. Um, and so, it needs to um, okay, let's see. Yeah, it'll basically just come in here and okay ideally we would set it up with some kind of let's see oh yeah so it, it needs to like take a lock on a data on on some kind of list right so it's gonna have like it's so ah see we need to wait it initialize the parent context it's not a okay um to do create a, or modify. So we need to modify Okay, so we need to modify um, Okay, so imp inner is going to set something on the uh, on the parent um, so basically there's, ooh, there's, and it might be more, actually it might be more straightforward if I just do that. Uh, right. So where's this? Um, uh, feature auth. Okay. So this is going to be more straightforward or what actually it yeah, might be more straightforward like this so all right so there's two ways I mean there's multiple ways we can define this right and so we're we're um, we could have defined it like that but that's probably gonna be a little bit um, less than straightforward so So you have an operation, and you have an operation context, right? And then you have, so you have the operation, which is like a function prototype in C, right? You have the operation context, which is what's actually doing the, doing the meat of the implementation. And then you have the implementation, which basically exists as long as the data flow exists um so when the basically it, it exists for the lifetime of the orchestrated context um and so what we can do is we can say we have a lock and we have a list um and um when we instantiate the data flow, so when we instantiate the orchestrated context, um, we can create um, a lock, 
because we want to create locks within a enter methods and there's basically some bugs with the file source right now but i'm working on that um so we have a list and we have So when the orchestrator context is created, right, and that's basically when we, yeah, it's here. So when we have this, when we create a data flow source context, um, so for so for the lifetime of this, this data flow source context, this, um, this, this operation like the example our example operation will will have this list right so basically if we run um if we run the records method here um it's going to be the same thing for the whole i guess body of this method in this case um that actually may not be exactly what we want here um because we really do want it to be just for the body of this method and not for the lifetime of every other thing um but we might need to change that so so we create the lock and then when we're running within the context here um so our input is going to be the our input would be the stop words um and then we need another input to be the length of the source itself. So we'd have to add something that's like, you know, um, plus, uh, plus blank if not um, self dot uh, length, or let's see. count maybe um or i don't know length length or count what do you guys think makes more sense for this source, me source method votes for length yeah length seems fine to me all right all right anybody vote for count all right length it is um okay else So we'll just do a wait self dot count or so the CTX dot length and the definition will be uh, we'll figure this out but basically it's gonna be some uh, primitive would be Right, so basically, if we'll add this config parameter to the source to say, um, you know, length is stir equals none. All right, so uh, should uh, feature name or definition name to add as source length um right so the number of so basically if someone specifies length right they should give the definition name that they want um to be added to the context um and it will contain the length of the source right um and so we'd come in here and we would let's see source length right so we'd come in here and we'd have um, let's see length or stop words and length and the output is um, uh, I'm just going to put all um, stop 
words. It's a, it's it all the stop words or what is this thing? Okay, all sentences you can see. I mean, we can replace stop words with sentences. All right. So and this is like a list of strings. Um. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. So we need to just basically wait here. Um, self.config or self.parent.list. Um, so that's what we're returning. Sync with self.parent.lock. Um, self.parent.list. Append uh, inputs stop words. Um, and now I guess. All right, and the key is let's see, how do we wait for? So if length, so if the, so we got to figure out how do we how do we make it so that um, um, how do we make it so that we wait for everything? Um, so inputs source length. Um, okay, so if self dot length is none, then length is the source length, and we append r one, and we say uh, if okay. All right. Okay. Now the problem is basically. Okay, so if length is one, okay, we need to create some kind of semaphore, I believe. It's been a while since I've used the semaphores, but I'm pretty sure this is the way to go here. Um, I think this is going to basically, let's see. Uh, I can't remember. Okay, so we want a semaphore or notify all, maybe. Okay. It might be, yeah, this might be better. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, so this is better. Yeah, we want this. Um, wake up all tasks and find on this condition. All right, so yeah, let's make a condition. Um, okay. That's so a parent dot condition. Let's see. Acquire the underlying lock. Notify all. Right, so we can have multiple coroutines wait on this, right? Event and a lock. So those are multiple conditions. Object share one lock. Okay. Yeah, I believe this is what we want. Um, coroutine acquire. is the underlying lock. Okay. Wait until notified. A calling task is not acquired to lock when this method is called. A runtime error is raised. The method releases the underlying lock and then blocks until it is awakened by a notify or notify all. Once awakened, the condition reacquires its lock and the method returns true. Uh, the 
this might be a problem. Okay, um, let's see, maybe we don't want this. Um, notify multiple async events. Maybe we want the event. It's been a while since I've dealt with this. Um, wait method until the flag. Seems that's true. Block until another test all set. All right, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is just what we want. All right, okay. Um, yeah, so basically, once we know, actually, we can probably create this at any point. Um, So, oh wait, self dot parent. this doesn't blow up um i don't think it will i think this is the intended way that this stuff is supposed to be used uh, it's been a while obviously since i've written something like this because um, this is like largely what the data flow stuff is um okay so I'll start. all right dot, or let's see dot parent dot list Right, so if the length of the list equals the length that we want, then we call event.set. And then it should wake up everyone else. Um, so we grab the lock, we add our word to the lock, or we add our list to the lock, or to the list. Um, and then we check, okay, if the length is correct, then we set the event and everyone else so basically only the last the last one is going to hit this and everyone else should be here waiting right and then yeah. the rest of the operations in the data flow will complete um when that event is set um okay multiple async io tests i believe that this is how this is supposed to work um so i think that should be what you want here um okay. Now, the one other thing that we thought about was that this orchestrator context is being created um, when orchestrator context is being created on the a enter method, but it's really only uh, relevant and it's really only relevant within records. And the other problem is that if you get a single record, that's not going to work. Um, right. So if you had, and why, why did this allow us to do this? Because we shouldn't have been able to instantiate this thing without a record method. That's weird. Um, okay. So if you get a single record, which for some reason, there's no, Save. I think the single record will work. I have used CSV source with just one image. I mean, um, oh, geez, yeah, 167 megabytes for the GZIP one. Um, I mean, did it, did it complete? Did the most yeah, one complete? It did. It okay. said 170 records were saved. Um, and uh, it was 167 megabytes. So, and that was a yeah, yeah, it one, Almost one MB per. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. No wonder that didn't work. Okay, so source source. Um, I'm just thinking like this is an abstract base method here, the record, and obviously it didn't base source context record is abstract, but. This must not instantiate or inherit from ABC. Yeah, it must not. 
Um, Because, yeah, if we call record, there is no record method on data flow source context. So that's kind of a problem. So that's an issue. Um, But also the the reason that I was mentioning this is because this works so long as you're grabbing every single one. It doesn't work. um, It doesn't it won't it wouldn't work if you grabbed a single record, right? You you need to process every record to do this, right? So you also need essentially an option to um, the data flow pre-processing source to say, okay, so you need, you need, this record needs to be implemented. This, this, this method needs to be implemented. Implement this record or this method. Uh, we forgot to implement that. So I didn't catch this when we did the code review on this one because this, I should have seen this. Um, but I also would have thought that the abstract base method stuff would have caught it. So uh, that's another problem there. Um, so we forgot to implement it when we initially added the uh, data flow source context. Um, and the um, so basically w- what's going to happen is that you would have to either do you'd have to have two options so like all of the records right and if um, uh, so the method here is So you'd have to have this, you'd have to have some option that says like, if, um, you know, self.config or self.parent.config, um, I guess that would be here. You'd have to have some option that says like, do I have to run everything to get this record? Or can I just run, um, can I just run the data flow on the record itself? Right. Um, okay. So. Uh, yes. As of now, I just need to run a single operation. To yeah. Obtain the result. Yeah. So, but so you, you, but you see, so basically, we're supposed to implement this record method, right? Um, yeah. Or something like this, right? So you need to be able to say, like, do I run? all the records right because so if you if you if someone were to call dot record and you um if someone were to call dot record you would need you need to run the entire you need to run every single record through because you can't you can't know what one record's output is without running all of the records data flows right because you have to run this operation that accumulates everything um and so therefore you need you need an option to the data flow preprocessing source that says run everything um, and, and otherwise you just do you just do um, uh, you just do the one right um, yeah. so let's see that's on the flight yeah I think for a record in key something like this um okay so i'm just going to post this patch um uh and hopefully and if you run into trouble um just let me know um other ways like hopefully the recording in this patch will be uh, helpful do you have any other immediate questions on this Uh, i was just thinking uh, i i was just thinking just now uh, why don't we have loops in a flow? Like we can um, modify a flow to have, uh, like, there can be loops that can be backward flow also. And we can base that on some condition. Then we can this have this type of things as a universal everywhere we can implement. Um, I'm sorry, what, what do you mean? Uh, so, like, we have the flow feature, right? 
we can flow from one operation to other data we can flow using the flow right yeah so but the thing is uh, it only flows in one direction mm -hmm. there is no loops so like i can go from first operation to second but there is nothing like i can go from first to second and then back again to from second to first so if we if we if can you have output like if you output data of the same definition you end up going back um so because it's all based on it's all okay so it checks in the network the definition right and then exactly. it uses okay, yeah okay. and it, i mean so so the the logic behind the the reasoning behind the way it is that it is is because it's all it com it's it's completely defined as like event driven you know right like because essentially every time a new definition is produced that's an event right and so it may be possible to to introduce a concept of 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 loops more in a more user-friendly way um there's there's definitely a, some there's definitely improvements that can be made to the user friendliness of the data flow um, stuff um, because it's not I mean it's not immediately intuitive um, uh, but it does give you this what the hell uh, it does give you this um, it does give you it it does let you de define this you know. Um, event driven approach to things um and so when you're defining you know if you want a loop then you end up needing to say like okay well there's that definition again um okay. and then and you'll you would see like when you visualize when you make the diagram you'd see that the that the um uh where i swear i had an example of this somewhere um you would see that Oh, this was the depth tree command, but that's not finished. Um, yeah, you would see, you would basically see the diagram feeding the definition back to itself. Um, and there's, there was one basically that, that, uh, the, there was an issue, there's an issue up there to create the dependency tree, right, for the Python projects where we would go figure out the version numbers and, and of uh, each yeah, package yeah. and sort of create yeah. a tree, right? And that yeah. is essentially like, it's, it's kind of a loop, but it's kind of like a recursive. It's, it's, it's a, the way it ended up working was that you have a data flow, and the data the data flow has a, a essentially you put the data you the top there's a top level data flow and then there's a subflow and the subflow does the thing where it just says okay, it, you know start with a package and find all the dependencies right and then the output of that data flow which is the subflow is a bunch of packages and so then you just say okay that's that's the subflow is running as an operation right so the run data flow operation runs a data flow right so it now it takes a package and it outputs packages and when it sees packages as you know being output it immediately reruns this operation right so it it just it inherently creates this tree um okay. until there's no more um and i don't know i mean it it essentially ends up being like a it's 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 kind of like a loop but it's kind of not you know right because the whole thing is 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 the idea is that it's event driven so basically i mean i just wanted to give you some background on that right and if you can if you have a, if you have a way that you can maintain if you can come up with a way where you maintain the event driven nature of things um while making loops more like more user friendly in in the way that you would you would declare that this is something that has a feedback loop right then then i'm all for it um uh, it's it, it may not be it may not be you know immediately um it it may it's 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 probably going to take some take some take some thinking about um yeah just just because it's it's kind of it's wacky stuff right um so let's see um okay Actually, wait. now i know what's going on here all right um Okay, so let me post this to the I'll create a gist because it's kind of long. Um, okay, so uh, df source and and the other thing to say on that I know we're getting really long here. I'm sorry about this, but um, 
the other thing to say on that is that yeah so the data the syntax of declaring data flows especially within python could definitely be improved um you know the way that we connect operations and stuff yes and if anybody ever yeah it's confusing right and so if anybody ever wants to tackle that that's definitely i mean i'm all for that um i had the one only thought that i had was basically you could um maybe take like a function um you could you could you could write you could use you could use um you could take like a fi a python function and decorate it with something you know make some kind of decorator and then have the inputs be the operations that you want to run and then when you call this function it would actually um it it would run it would pass um it would sort of okay so yeah you imagine you have this function and you have the arguments are all the operations you want to run now okay. the body of the function shows you, you know your you would basically call the functions right call the operations and take the outputs and pass them to the other operations right and so basically you you have this regular style you know syntax for what's going on here right it's it's very obvious right to the to the casual observer um, now the trick becomes what you would do is that if within the decorator you 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 make it so that when the function's called, um, it doesn't. It's not actually calling those operations. Um, it it creates, you know, it, it passes some other representation and allows us to sort of take the output of all of this and update some kind of data structure within the wrapper function, the decorator, and then the output is the is the data flow itself. Um, uh, if that makes sense, that was the only sort of preliminary thoughts I had on on making this better, um, because then you get you know the regular syntax of, of you know what what people are used to. Um, I don't know. Did that make sense? Sort of. Yeah, but uh, I I need to get it uh, like properly because yeah. it's a bit complex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There's like I yeah. There's there's some there's some weirdness in here for sure. Um, so data flow source i mean I, I think any any ideas to make it more clear is 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 i'm all for it um just wanted to share my my only yeah, thing there. i think i think uh, whenever you have time uh, if you can write it somewhere then yeah. maybe we can read and we can okay discuss that sounds good. so let's see um Tax improvements. Yeah, because it's not it's not a it's not a walk in the park to to write that. Um, so data flow source um, accumulator operation with with uh, partial modifications to data flow to source for. Um, this ends up working for you um, I feel like it should work um, okay um, and then okay so what what else do you want to spam detection is that sort of closely yeah, related or yeah, both of them have the same problem okay so great yay <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. and then then tensorflow is the last thing then so yeah so, so tensorflow actually I I will have to see it once again because it's not creating a problem as of now, but it is indeed a problem, but uh, not something that we're facing. So I will okay. basically, I will get a bit prepared on that before presenting it. Here. Okay, that sounds good. Um, because yeah, I was I was having a little bit of trouble understanding. Um, yeah. let's see, it's been so long since I've messed with that those files. Yeah, and I, I faced it a long long ago that. also, so I don't remember exactly yeah, what right. are the pieces. Yeah. yeah, that API is not my favorite. Okay. Um, all right, so TensorFlow will provide us an update uh, in the future 
on the possible slash maybe present issue with uh, MP arrays, right? It has to do with NumPy arrays? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. All right, well, thanks, everyone. Is there anything from anyone else? Uh, John, I merged master in the oh, data plus blockchain. Great, and I said merged here, so I'm glad that we got that. Yes. All right, okay, so... Um, Squash and merge. Sweet. All right, perfect. Yay. All right. Great. Great stuff. So now we're closer to the 3.8 milestone, I think. Okay. Um, yes, I think we are. Yeah, we're getting pretty close. The main thing is we have to go. Um, let's see. Yeah, we can just check that real quick. Uh, yeah, okay. The Docker container is open, broken. CLI needs to be upgraded to use Flow. And then the DAM integration. <laughs> demo that one needs to be fixed actually i've had i've had multiple people ask me about that use case and i have to be like ah that demo is actually broken um so i that's still my ar is to go fix that all right well thank you everyone and uh anybody got anything else or are we good no yeah just uh, the layer support thing okay yes the layer support thing yes and so that is my let me just I will write that down right now. I have like 20 lists going. <laughs> um, actually, let's see. No, that is not on this list. Okay. Layer support. Layer support. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Have a great... Um, I'll, I'll talk to you maybe on Gitter, and you might see me online a little bit, um, but probably next Tuesday. So, all right. Thank you and have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.